Hello and welcome to Natasha's Creation. It's 2020, we couldn't go out this year, and I wanted an excuse to wear my flapper costume that I got last year because I was super excited for the 20s to come back. So this video is all about flappers and the 1920s, the jazz age, the lost generation, and what we can learn from them. A lot of good things happened in the 1920s. Women in America received the right to vote. Scientists were making great advancements in technology and scientific research. Cars, radios, household appliances, and even films were becoming commonplace luxuries. And the stock market was rising. But there were just as many negative aspects of society affecting people at the time. People were recovering from the First World War, the war to end all wars. This was a trauma for citizens and soldiers alike. Prohibition also affected the collective psyche. This was a restriction that people rebelled against in the form of speakeasies and bootleggers and organized crime. Rebellion was actually really prevalent during this era. Women rebelled against social norms with bold flapper fashion statements and behaviors. Young people rebelled against traditional society by dancing the Charleston and listening to jazz music, which seems kind of tame now, but at the time it really shocked traditionalists who thought that these rhythms promoted promiscuity. After World War I, a lot of jazz musicians from New Orleans moved north to cities like New York and Chicago. Jazz music became super popular in speakeasies and new recording technologies and the radio helped spread the genre. African American jazz was mostly played on urban radio stations, um, not as much on suburban stations, and young people used this music to rebel against older generations. The Charleston dance, also developed by African Americans, was popular among all demographics. And the most popular type of radio show was the Potter Palm, which was kind of a big band jazz concert broadcast out of New York and Chicago. Flappers were young women who wanted to break away from traditional Victorian views on women. They stopped wearing Victorian corsets, cut their hair short, started wearing a lot of makeup, started smoking and drinking alcohol, and even invented the concept of dating. Before World War I, young women would basically wait around for a proper gentleman to show interest with the intent of marriage. But during World War I, a lot of young men died, leaving lots of women without potential suitors. So flappers decided after World War I that they were not going to sit around waiting for men. They were going to go out and enjoy life. They were gonna drink, smoke, dance, go out and party and be as promiscuous as they wanted to be. A flapper's clothes were trimmed down for ease of movement, mostly because the dances at the time required people to move around freely. They weren't trimmed down as dramatically as people think, but for the time it was very shocking. The little boy look was popularized by Coco Chanel. Women would bound their chests with cloth and waistlines on clothes were shaved down so it created a rectangular flat look and at night flappers wore gaudier things like long pearl necklaces a lot longer than this one really long drop earrings also longer than this one uh, bracelets and bangles really big rings and of course the feathered headband became weird in the 1920s. Expressionism, inspired by Van Gogh and by Edvard Munch's screen painting, distorted reality. The Dada art movement was characterized by irrationality, randomness, disillusionment, cynicism, and the rejection of conformity, tradition, and capitalism. And surrealism was surreal. 
It was mostly characterized by surprise and weird juxtaposition. Art Deco was the dominating design and architecture style at the time. Inspired by ancient Egypt, it combined traditional flourishes and ornamentation with machine age modern geometric patterns. Film was also really popular in the 1920s. Talkies became a thing and this was considered the golden age of cinema. The economy was also booming at the time. Many people had more money than they knew what to do with, which created feelings of boredom and purposelessness. There was also a great prosperity divide between the rich and the poor. Many Americans, disillusioned by the idea of the American dream, left the country and a lot of them moved to Paris. They became the lost generation. Paris was a popular hub for a lot of the writers, artists, and performers who now represent this era and you can see their lost boy attitude in a lot of their work. This generation seemed to take a cue from their Gilded Age predecessors and they covered up their personal problems with parties and glamour. And I think they kind of succeeded in rewriting their stories. They're now remembered really fondly. This was people like F. Scott Fitzgerald, Ernest Hemingway, Gertrude Stein, and even Pablo Picasso. But their legacy is also one of anxiety and depression because they were actually running away from their problems. These days, millennials born between 1981 and 1996 are actually the same age as the generation that defined the 1920s was. Social media has created kind of another Gilded Age, where we cover up our personal problems with fake glamour online. And technology, as it was in the 1920s, is booming and changing the world. But we don't have to move to Paris to find like-minded individuals these days. You can find your own tribe online. So I think what we can learn from the Jazz Age in the 1920s is that things are not always as they seem, and they're not always lost. So to end on a lighter note, here is some Jazz Age flapper lingo. And now, here's some flapper lingo. Isn't that just the bee's knees and the duck's quack? It's the berries. Let's blouse. Banks closed. Don't be such a dud. Oh, don't talk to him. He's such a gimlet. I'm going dancing with my goof tonight. She's sweet, but she's such a tomato. I heard that Tom's blue surge is actually a snake charmer. I'm not surprised though. I think her dapper is an embalmer. He's such a billboard. Did you hear? Susan and John are dropping the pilot, and now their son's becoming a dew dropper. Oh, I'll just call myself a dim box. Did you see Lucy walk in with her urban set? You can't be too harsh on her. She's a weeping willow. So that's my video on the 1920s. If you liked it, please subscribe and have a great day.